What is up, everybody? My name is Ryland Russell, coming to you from Central Baptist here in Owasso, where I'm the worship pastor. One of the most watched videos on this channel of our churches is how we set up our stream uh, with all of our video cameras on a budget-conscious way. And so the most asked question I get after people watch that video is, how do you set up your audio for your stream? So today I'm going to walk you through how we set up our audio on our soundboard. This is our worship center. We do a live uh, contemporary worship service. If you haven't checked out our channel, you can watch and see if you think this is even worth your time based on how our worship services sound. So let me walk you through our sound mix for the stream. Basically, we set up our mix on a stereo bus. It is not monitored by anyone. It is dependent on a post-fade mix, and we set things that way so we can do a few different things with our stream mix. Number one, we can mix in our ambient crowd mics. Number two, we can adjust levels for gain uh, independently of what you hear in the room. Number three, we run a mono mix in our room, like probably many of you do, but with the stereo bus, we can do panning, which makes a world of difference. And the fourth thing is that we can add some uh, like mastering type effects on there uh, to limit the sound, compress it a little bit, and bring it up for the broadcast. So let's go in to the soundboard. We run a Midas M32. And if you run an X32, it's pretty much the same thing. So let me show you how to set up a stereo bus if you have never done that. The first thing you're going to do is go into your bus masters. And here we've set up our stereo stream bus on bus 11 and 12. So if we select that, um, and then we go, I'll bring up the monitor here for you. What you're going to want to do is set these up if you select the bus and go to your config tab you're going to want to set those as a post fader uh, group and you're going to want to link them so when you link them it's going to ask you click yes and now your bus is set to stereo so now that you have your bus set on 11 and 12 what you're going to do is mix your channels 1 through 16, 17 through 32, independently of your mix for the house, but post fader. So that way, what does happen for the mix in the house affects somewhat what you hear online. So if we select our bus and flip our faders, we can see the mix that we've built with our 32 channels. What we do here is we mix uh, our pastor mic and our announcement mic much hotter than the other microphones because people are just speaking. And so they're not as loud in the room as they need to be on the stream. So that's kind of the first thing that you're going to see that you can do if you do it this way, is that you can bump up the things that aren't loud enough and you can take down the things that are too loud. Say if you have cymbals um, that in the room, they're not very loud, but you want to have those in the stream mix, so you can boost those a little bit or include them at all <laughs> in the stream mix. But like your pastor mic usually is not very loud. Uh, to our ears, it's good in the room, but for a broadcast mix, it's not very loud. So you can boost that when you go into the levels. So back to our soundboard area, we've got uh, vocal mics, and we have guitars, um, all your typical band stuff. And if we look at our drums here, for instance, we've got our drums mixed a little bit hotter, and we even have our cymbals included. But if we unflip that fader, um, our cymbals are not very loud in the house because uh, our drums are not caged or anything, so we don't really need them to be. Um, the second thing is that uh, we can use stereo. So for our room, we don't have a stereo mix. It's all mono. And so what we can do is now with that stereo bus, if I go back in here to 
Let's see. For instance, if I go to our electric guitar lead and you go over to sins, you can pan now on your sins. Uh, ours is panned a little bit to the right. Um, if we go to like our vocal mics, they are not panned. That one is panned. So you can do some little panning stuff that it only affects the stream mix. Now the pan function on our board that you see, um, like that has the actual knob, that's for panning what's coming out of your mains. And since we don't do a stereo mix, you, it really doesn't function that way. So don't be confused. That's not how you do it. You have to actually pan between the two stereo mixes because if you go into the bus, um, I'm doing this all live, guys. Sorry, I don't want to edit this later. <laughs> if we go into our bus, you can see that bus 11 is panned all the way to the left, hard left, and bus 12 is panned all the way hard to the right. So that way, when we assign things either to bus 11 or bus 12, then that creates the stereo image. I hope that makes sense. Um, the other thing that you can do and really should do is include ambient crowd mics. Um, in our room, we have crowd mics. If you're looking at the stage, one on either side of the stage directly above uh, and on each kind of side. So we have two um, condenser mics up there hanging from our light truss that you can't quite see. It's just above the frame pointing out. And if we go back into our soundboard, if we look at those crowd mics, we have those over here, and they are not assigned to your main stereo mix. You do not want those in the stereo mix because that would be horrible. You just need those to have a channel here and then to be assigned to your bus. So if we go back into our stream, we've got our crowd mics, and those are assigned to the bus. All right, let's see. Um, the last thing I'll do uh, in our chain of signal that I'll talk to you about before I just play some audio and show you kind of the difference of sending just your board mix versus sending this independent mix uh, is to talk about um, the compressor limiter type effects that we put on our send before it hits our multicam edit. So what we do currently, if we go into our effects, and let's see. Right now we use a reverb for the house vocals and a delay for the house vocals. Um, these two are plate reverb and sound maxer are only for the stream. The plate reverb is a drum reverb that we use only on the drums. I mean, it's not a drum reverb, but that's how we use it. And then the sound max, uh, it's kind of, I don't know, I had a guitar pedal like it once. And, um, this is how we use the sound to go into this, and it kind of just creates like a little more polished, um, boosted signal. I, I'm probably not explaining that right, but I'll show you in just a moment what it does. The other thing that we do is we also apply a slight compression, just the built-in uh, compressor on the M32 to those buses. So now I want to play... Uh, just some of a multi-track from a recording from a worship night a few weeks ago back through the board of our band. And if you don't have headphones on, go ahead and pop those on so I can just show you the difference. Um, and I will just solo out the uh, stream mix and you can see. So this is the board mix. This is not 
the stream mix that you're about to hear. So now I will solo out the stream mix and you'll hear the difference. Everything that I do on the board, if I mix things differently, it's dependent on my post fade mix. And you can also mix it, you know, separately on your your bus mix. But um, that is really the differences, guys. I know that's kind of a quick and dirty type thing, but hopefully that helped you some. Um, if you have any questions, post them below and I'll try to help you. All right.